Hey, that's a pretty good intro, isn't it? Welcome to Jurassic Park catch up for the stream. We're going to climb atop the Chattosaurus Rex. Nice. And we will ride it until it um, <clears throat> disappears into nothing, I guess. Nice. Until it's just a memory, a fading memory. Well, the first super chat says a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. That's not even in Jurassic Park. That's in the other dinosaur movie, Revenge of the Sith. I really like that. There was sort of a dinosaur in Revenge of the Sith that Obi Wan was riding in Utapua. Oh, I thought. Or Utapau. I was going to get called out because I, I snuck in an, another inaccuracy in there. From. Uh, not from. Uh, a Star Wars at all. Surprised to be sure, but a welcome one. It's actually from Star Trek. Fox says it to uh, Kirk. The. <laughs> motion picture. I don't know if you remember. We watched it recently. We did. He said... Well, you two did. I haven't seen it, so... He said, Jim, what's your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> and Jim didn't know, and so Spock said, I like the Logisaur Logicsaurus. Mm, Rex. Right, Rex. The king of logic. The dinosaur that is the king of logic. And then Bones comes in and he says, damn it, Spock, can't you think of anything except logic? And then Spock says no. It's really good. It is a really good scene. I, I like really it. feel like they captured the characters. I learned a lot about dinosaurs, about Spock. The next one says, could you do more reviews on old movies? I don't see why not. In the I don't see why not either. It seems like a totally doable thing. It does. Nothing is preventing us from doing it, except yeah. all the things we are, or all we need to do before it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we'll get there. Finally, the Jurassic Park arc. I can't wait for you to prove 3 is the best of the sequels. Oh my god. Oh my goodness gracious. I wonder, because I don't know. I have to see them all again. But I, I know for a fact that the fucking sequel ones aren't going to stand a chance, you know? The sequel sequels. No way. Um, also, hi Rags, Fringy. How hello. are you and your goo? Mola, hello. Yeah, I'm alright. I don't know about my goo. It's not very sentient. Hmm. Oh. That's an odd response. I don't think so. <laughs> I saw this movie in theaters when it came out. I was five then. I remember my mom covering my eyes when the lawyer gets eaten. Well, shouldn't really hide children from that. They need to know the lawyers will get eaten by dinosaurs. That's just you a... took your kid to a movie that you knew damn well would involve dinosaurs eating people. What did you expect? I mean, yeah. Was it just that you like wanted to go then? and you couldn't get rid of the kid for the day? Is that it? That's what. That's it. That's what happened. Oh, that is look it. away from the dinosaur eating people. Well, the kid is like, "Come on, let me see." And he hears all the noises and the dinosaurs and the velociraptors in the kitchen, and he was probably uh, terrified, and he had many nightmares, mm. and he slept unwell for many subsequent days. Speaking of podcasts called EFAP, please check out the podcast called Come Town. It's very funny stuff. And yes, Fringolio, it's a real thing. Why? Right. Fringy is... doesn't believe in the existence of Come Town. The he podcast it's just called a, Come Town. Just a traveler's tale. I wonder what they focus on. Maybe Towns, the... probably. Towns, yeah. Well, uh, oh, crispy critters, it's EFAP. Wait a minute. Atomic Heart is old news, okay? No one's going to talk about that game again. Done so. But we talked about it recently because we did a catch-up for it. Um, I legit ran away from home with a toy gun and friend I had over at the age of six. We had just watched Jurassic Park again and we went dinosaur hunting. Had the cops nice. hold a search party for us. You know, you might mock him, but I don't recall ever seeing any dinosaurs around. Certainly not after that event. Great yeah, dinosaur have, hunt. They must have got him. That was a brave thing they did. Keeping us safe. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, lads. Since Velma is a horrible abomination, how about you guys watch Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost and Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island to see good Scooby-Doo content? Also, hello, Rags. Hi. And Fringy is a bird. Yeah, I watched uh, both I mean, of those that's movies. That's your opinion. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's where I like him. he watched both of them. That's probably more a matter of just fact. Uh, I would consider it a fact, yes. It's also my opinion that I did it, but it is uh, as well a fact. It is both uh, your opinion and a fact, true. I, I have seen both of them. I think Zombie Island is my favorite of the, the Scooby-Doo movies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but who knows? Maybe we'll get around to rewatching them. I can't say. But I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Zombie Island is, is, is my favorite. In fact, I am certain that it's my favorite. I don't know if it's the best, though. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, Fringo Boingo. This might be a little awkward for rags, but between these two insect mavericks, which do you like more? And it's Blast Hornet or Ground Garavich. Garavich? Oh, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, okay, so Blast Hornet and... I'll do the second. Ground Scarabitch. Um, this is I'm going to go, go, go uh, with the Ground Scarabitch, I think. This is I the like Ground his... Scarabitch. I'll post, I'll share it with the class so we can all see. I like his, uh, I like his mustache compared to the Hornet. The Hornet comes across as uh, a bit over-designed to me, I'd say. Blast or there we go. Um, I would, yeah, I'd agree. The blast hornet seems a bit busy. Um, I think uh, I'm legit struggling with the big like grenade looking ass thing that the the hornet's got there. You know, it's a bit difficult to distinguish pieces. Yeah. Whereas the ground scarvich, I don't think he's awesome or anything, but mm. I like that he kind of looks like an old western kind of a uh, fellow with his big mustache there. Um, yeah, but not a big fan of either of these, honestly. Yeah, they're pretty. I think yeah, it's it's, it's not. Yeah, these aren't they're these just, aren't the best. Both of them are a bit overdesigned and lacking clarity, I'd say. Very well. Mm -hmm. A great thumbnail is Oni plays weird free games. Hmm. Weird games. Hopefully that's enough. Yeah, it is. Well, it says best of weird free games, so I assume that's it. It is from Oniplay. They're not wrong. Pretty good thumbnail. Oh my goodness. It's slimy and gooey. <laughs> slimy and gooey that, is all free games the are. that they're making really have a <laughs> sort of vibe, don't they? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Smiling Friends Season 2, where is it? Give me. Uh, give him time, jeez. No. It's only been a year. Not allowed time. Time is evil. Time is illegal oh. now. No, time is what they need. They need time Down to make it great. Down with time. Down with I, time. I don't, I don't think you know what you're asking for. Down uh, with, with time. time. Time is evil. Ooh, time. What has time ever done for me? Yeah. <laughs> Recently. This this one says, is this the oldest guest ever on EFAB? Like, oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, maybe. The one thing know. we haven't done yeah. yet, we'll set it up eventually, Gary, is to I guess. deposit your ages to us when you enter the podcast. That is the one thing we forgot yeah. to ask. But uh, possibly. Just make sure, you're over 18, right? You've got your, well, how old are you? Uh, Phil Tippett actually did use stop motion to an extent in Jurassic Park. His team had a tool, dinosaur input device, to keyframe movements digitally with stop motion techniques. The T-Rex breakout scene is one example. Well, it looks fantastic. Um, if they use, yeah, I don't know. Is that stop motion? If you use like digital keyframes, like what do you mean by, depends on what they mean by stop motion techniques. Maybe they just mean that the technology developed to help him with stop motion was used to, to help make the T-Rex. Look, we'll move, Which makes move sense, out. yeah. Like he would use a lot of what he learned doing stop motion to, um, you know, to actually do the yeah, do the dinosaur stuff. Uh -huh. Can you raise Fringy's volume by fifteen percent? I don't know if well, I actually did. I suppose that's not, that's not yeah. applicable anymore. Not really. It was really either right. raised or it wasn't, and it's all Mola's fault. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, why it wouldn't be fault if I did it, right? Um. Well, I'm saying if you didn't do it, that's all. Oh well. Yeah. All right. It's a lot of responsibility to take on, but you know what? I'll do it. Good. Uh, 
Lord Longbong of Muslington Abbey, is there any good mm. chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? Mm -hmm. Be movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsy. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you. Uh, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I think we might be able to get around to that once we clear our schedules. I was going to say, once maybe. less is going on, I'd probably say that's the definite Absolutely. Right once, once less is going on, yeah. Mm-hmm. Once less is going on? Christ, if I had known you guys would have been covering Jurassic Park, I would have set up some Union Jacks for you. Can't wait for this one. Well, hopefully you enjoyed it. The great Robert Meyer Burnett. I'm a happy man. Hey. Look at all these happy messages. So kind. Uh, I love the clever girl meme. Hi, Rags. Hello. It's good stuff. Pretty clever girl. <laughs> Oh, wow. Didn't expect Jurassic Park this week. Love to see it. Hope this means possibly some more of you guys' classic favorite films are covered in future. Like I said, I don't see why um, not. At some point, yeah. maybe. There's a lot of classic films to cover. There's plenty of the, the well, great classics that we haven't seen that we need to knock off our list, and who knows what will become of those watches. It's like um, when people say, like, you know, say, for example, the Shazam stream, and someone, you could do that to any film. It's like, you can. And when you do it to something like Jurassic Park, you start finding loads of really cool shit. Yeah, it's it. The, the film actually gets better the more you look at it. There's, yeah. there's a thought. There's a thinker, Rooney. So this the this user asks: Are the raptors woke? Yes. Yes, because they're all girls. Is ridiculous and uh, overcompensating. That's what that is. Yep. Would rather watch this than Creed Five. Take my money. Creed Five. Oh. I think they've only Thanks. gone up to three so far, but yeah. Three, isn't it? Creed know. three? <laughs> Why not, I suppose, you know? Maybe he's a time traveler and he's Ooh. confused. Well, then, I'd say a time traveler and they, they came to watch EFAP of all things? Nice. Nice. They're, they're catching up on the ones they missed live. That's a responsible use of that power. Mm -hmm. The dinner conversation is top-tier dialogue. Yeah, I agree. I it really is, thing. yeah. They've it's all a got a different perspective. Uh, EFAP on Apple TV's Prehistoric Planet plausible? Do you mean like if we were to watch Prehistoric Planet for EFAP TV? Doubtful. Because uh, we'd mostly just be enjoying it and then be like, wow, this is just amazing. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, happy to see you guys cover Jurassic Park. Seriously, check out our Camp Cretaceous. Oh, I think they meant check out Camp Cretaceous. It's legit. Unique characters, and it feels like true continuation of the original. DreamWorks did what the Jurassic World movies could never do. It's an animated series from 2020. There were five seasons. Damn. Wait, if it's from 2020, how does it have five seasons? They Maybe they made a than, lot. They yeah. squeezed them in? I guess so. Well, it said, yeah, TV series from 2020 to 2022. How's it rated? Um, let's see. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes says... 92 from critics, 78 from audiences. Uh, IMDb has 7.5 out of 10. Um, Google's rated it really highly. So, oh. yeah, I'm, I'm actually not really that certain. Oh. Seems like it's decent, at least based off of those. Good Perhaps. Decent, you know. Check it out someday. Who knows? Maybe. I was humming the Jurassic Park theme all morning today. was shocked when I saw today's topic. Maybe a spider was humming into my ear last night while I slept. Like a portent? Spiders will do that, yeah. They've been known to. Uh, Mola, when is the last time you played Jurassic World Evolution 2? I, I only played it that one time, and then I got distracted with stuff. I might go back to it at some point, I don't know, but you know how it'd be. we got, we got some other games coming out, so... Maybe I'll find a way, I don't know. Um, my dad had a friend whose father landed on Omaha Beach and showed him the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. When it was over, he asked him, was it that bad? His dad said worse. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked by that. Well, I uh, recall that those were, that, that was the stories when um, the film came out that a lot of World War II veterans had to like leave the theater because it was just too raw. Yeah. Lot gets captured in those kinds of films. That's why we want them to be sort of having a level of respect. Well, yeah, it's Saving Private Ryan is an important movie beyond being an excellently made film. Uh, any plans to bring Movie Cynic onto EFAP? Also, hi, Fringo. Yeah, maybe at some hey. point. Maybe. He's, uh, he's the lad I met on uh, Open Bar. Right. Oh, possible. 
Also, can you review Planet of the Apes series? I do believe the directors did a good job on the CG. So they'd be well, the, I mean, that uh, must be the new the ones, new ones then, yeah. right? I assume, yeah. Um, well, that's still three movies. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's not, not impossible, of... just uh, don't know when we'd be think... doing that. No, I think I'd just rather watch all kinds of other stuff. I just don't really care about the Planet of the Apes things. How come? I just, I just don't. I just don't have any interest in it. You have you seen them? No. Because I don't have any interest in them. <laughs> well, I mean... That's a, nice, that's a nice convenient little loop there, isn't it? I mean, I just don't care. What's the, I, yeah, but I, just, I don't hear you I say that don't... about basically anything, so what's the bias against Planet of the Apes? None, I just, like, I'd rather watch other things. You fucking, you've, you've talked about how you wouldn't mind watching, like, those, what, what were they, were they My Little Pony or something, or Barbie movies at some point? What's Frank the, and the Barbie movies? Yeah, well, how come they get a pass, but Planet of the Apes gets put yeah, in the no let pile? Me, let me tell you. I don't know, I, I just, just think it'd be interesting to rank them and see how they stack. Oh, yeah, so instead of watching <laughs> okay. three of the Planet of the Apes films, we can watch, what, 30 Barbie movies? <laughs> I didn't, Why? I didn't just say that. Of your I didn't say watching 30 Barbie <laughs> I didn't say that. How can we rank them if we're not watching of, all of them? It's not bar. It's not. It's not bizarre. Um, but I don't think that I was uh, advocating that we all sit around and watch thirty Barbie movies and ranking them. That would. Not, that's not an EFAP project. And if, yet, if we would you still above. have a desire to watch some of them. I don't at think the very I would and rank them and do so above watching Planet of the Apes. Um. I mean, yes. I don't what <laughs> new. The fact Not that you for, don't as an EFAP the project, I just uh, I, I I think I'll be Planet of the Apes would work better for EFAP, but for my own personal reasons, um, ranking the Barbie movies is just like I don't know, it's just because they have it's a life goal. because I I've seen so many of them growing up because I'm I'm the oldest of four and my sisters would watch a lot of those and so I've seen a bunch of them and even my sisters would really prefer some over the others and even my dad had mentioned oh they're watching this one this is one of the better ones or I fucking hate that one and so I'm like huh it's like there there really are differences that people kind of pick up and and they have different vibes from one another and um I don't know just the, the fact that they're kind of a part of my childhood in a way as many uh like of that sort of thing is cuz you know if you know it was four you pick up a lot of stuff that you're youngest siblings uh, watch you just absorb it so all i'm learning it's is it's a pity your sisters weren't more interested in planet of the apes i guess we'd be watching uh we watching all the planet of the, Ape, the originals the weird tim burton one then the new ones yeah uh, it's all of them because um have you seen all three of the new ones for you mm -hmm. i i think i saw the first two i didn't see the third ah and uh i remember thinking they're neat i like them a lot, actually. Who's the guy who made them again? Directly? Matt Reeves made the last two right, uh, Reeves, yeah. before he moved on to the Batman. I'm not. I don't know who made the first one. Well, the first one of the reboot trilogy, the second reboot trilogy of the Planet of the Apes, of course. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to say, I watched the new Puss in Boots after EFAP's coverage, and I loved it. Thank you all for, for all that you do. Oh well, I'm glad you really liked it. Always good to Glad hear that to. people are uh, are into that movie. We definitely want to encourage that sort of stuff to get made and rewarded. Whenever the Last Wish comes up, I'm just like, go watch it, everybody. It's really good. Go watch it. Go, 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 go. Do it. go. Huge recommend. Fun facts number one: You T Rex is IRL accurate if you head cannon. It's malnourished. Okay. Do they mean the um, one from the film or do? They... I assume they mean the one from the film, but I don't know. Look, I don't, I, I mean, maybe. He's a bigger belly. Well, apparently. I'm guessing it might be maybe they're chunkier uh, than they appear in that film. You know, because of all the different things that we learn about what dinosaurs may well have actually looked like. Uh, um, yeah, maybe. Number two, the IRL version of the Dilof, Dilo, Dilo R they've got? Dilo. Either way, they said that that one's four times bigger, IRL. And then number three, the movie should have used lizards, not frogs. Number four, high rags. Hello. Very well. All right. Maybe. Sweet. I yeah. just I just don't yeah. know. Couldn't tell you myself. Jurassic Park is my favorite movie. So happy to see this pop up. It's a lot of people's favorites. It's really good. 
yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Gonna do an EFAP on Nostalgia Critic's take on this film. He has the most bizarre take on Malcolm's character I've ever seen. Let me make a note and I'll go uh, see what that's about. <laughs> I was about to say that might Wait, be. And this is who? Nostalgia Critic. Nostalgia Critic. Mm, I can, I can, you know what? I'll just take it at you at your word that he has a really weird take <laughs> on something. I believe you. I saw someone like share a comment about uh, Nostalgia Critic being like, I want to approach life with the confidence Doug does whenever he makes a skit. <laughs> <laughs> or reviews a movie. <laughs> Just anything, really. Just anything, <laughs> Like, could I be wrong? Nah. Nah. I probably couldn't. Pretty That's clever ants. Pretty clever ants. Yeah. Ugh. That ant movie be so film. good. That film, yeah. It just, uh, it came yeah. and it went, didn't it? Yeah, I mean... Pretty it, good. It's. It feels like uh, it. It's fading relevance is matching Shazam's and Shazam only just came out. You know what I mean? Like yes, like Shazam. <laughs> it's already, of course. You know, <laughs> barring whenever this is actually getting released. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems the the conversation is already over. It's being concluded. I think that's what. It seems like that almost determines its relevance. Like the nature of what people have come to conclude about something. Um. And in particular, if it's just regarded as being bad from the outset, then that's it. Conversely, a film like Puss in Boots is kind of an interesting contrast because the longer that that film is being discussed, the more and more people are starting to pick up about it. Like little details, just they just keep getting noticed by people. It's like a film that keeps improving as people talk about it, whereas everybody agrees that Ant-Man is a clown movie. So that's the end of the conversation, isn't it? Listening to you while I try to write, really hope you do more of these discussions on past films. Have you boys seen Last Action Hero, Schwarzenegger movie that parodies action films, and it has Charles Dance as the big bad? It does. <gasps> Gasp. I, uh, I, I've, I don't know. I've seen it I, a long I, time ago. It's like ages not, ago. One of his less favored films, but at the same time, it's a pretty neat little idea. So maybe we'll check that out. I have not out. seen it, but I've heard, I've heard neat, neat things about it, but I haven't uh, seen it. It'd be really neat it. to watch. Like now, especially, just to see, because of all the, you know, it comes from a time that's, dare I say, much more interesting. Well, the nature of what that film was even trying to be, you know, compared to where we're at now. Yeah. The idea that a, a, a parody is better than things trying to be serious nowadays. Oh, well, maybe more so, like, what does a parody, you know, what does a parody look like 30 years ago compared to now? Like, what are the tropes now? What are the conventions now of the genre? Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, is is this parody movie legitimately <laughs> more coherent than uh, some of these superhero films? Mosasaurus aren't dinosaurs, they're big lizards. No, really. Listen, there's lots of fun facts that I um, choose to almost yeah. always believe about the nature of dinosaurs and everything. Sure, there's a phylogeny technicalities and all kinds of stuff that go into what's a lizard and a, whatever a dinosaur is and the pterosaurs or different, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh my god, EFAP is covering Jurassic Park? This is a dream come true. I've been waiting for a Jurassic Park EFAP for five years. Feels like 2018 again. Oh. Wow. Well. Well. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, really hope that you like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Covered the yeah. whole flim. Took some time to prepare all those notes to make sure we broke it down in a way that was uh, fair to its script, I would hope. So, and, you know, hey, it was a seven-hour stream, I think, right? Uh, yes. It's funny, it was, growing it up, sound like that, yeah. I hated Jurassic Park because I thought it was boring. Then as <gasps> I grew up, it quickly became one of my top five favorite movies of all time. Man, was I an idiot as a little girl. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you probably... Well, but, you know, that's just kids in general. You know, they're pretty stupid. But... We don't typically yeah, put kids in charge of anything for that reason. Uh Yeah, so it works out. But hey, there you go. Apologies, Mola, but Morbius is the most memed movie ever. Therefore, it is the greatest of all time. Is it the most memed movie ever? Because, like, it's... The memes for it... I mean, they're not entirely gone, but it feels like a, you know, a star that burned... Twice as bright, or you know, whatever. <laughs> the, the, the Half as long, twice as bright. It's that sort of thing, yeah. Meanwhile, the prequels, like, that was going for ages, and it still is. I don't yeah. know, it feels like Revenge of the Sith is more memed than Morbius. I think so. The, oh, uh, yeah. But I guess the problem is it's, it's almost unfair to compare because it's a film that's, you know, 17, nearly 18 years old compared to 
uh, a relative newcomer in the the world of memes. I will say that is true, though. The what, like the first decade of Revenge of the Sith life, it was not memed to the degree it is right no, now. No, it was uh, it was later when it yeah. started to become memed. I'm curious how that sort of became a thing. How it became so, you know, heavily memed. Uh, uh, I wonder, like, the internet process behind that phenomenon and how it picks up, starts and picks up and then carries on. Because it just, it's, I don't know, maybe it's the seriousness that people take the original and, and maybe people's ability to recognize its flaws and people's just general attitude that they have towards it. Um, and the way that you can be like respectful of something, but in sort of like a joking kind of way, a nudge, nudge. Yeah, we, you know, it's bad, but you know, we have fun and we all know it. We don't need to say it. You know, we, we can have fun. I think it's a lot simpler than that. I think it was when people started to really think that they were bad, that that's when they started getting memed and now it's turned into a, more of a, a sign of endearment. Kind of. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds like it really, it could be, uh, definitely could be the case. You brought him here to kill me. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's hilarious. You turned her against me. <laughs> <laughs> you want that finger from me? <laughs> Why? Uh, because of Obi-Wan. No. 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 Because of Obi-Wan. No. no. Liar. <laughs> Liar. 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 You're with him. You're with him. <laughs> you killed You're me. With him. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is with the delivery. This is a serious story. <laughs> yes, it's very serious. Stop laughing at me. Uh, uh, Jurassic Park is hands down my favorite film of all time, and I'm so happy you and Robert Meyer Burnett are covering it. Thank you all so much, and of course, hi, Rags. Hello. Cool and good stuff. Uh, would what would a communist Jurassic Park be like? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know either. I um, I mean, it would I, a, a state-run park for the general cultural. Or would it just be as simple or... as the T Rex would have the little hat? You know, he's got a the little Nishanka. hammer and sickle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He just carries them around everywhere Those he goes. Little arms. Mm. Yep. It's quite sharp, but he can't reach you, so yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Samuel Jackson really nailed his character, his expressions, his gestures, his arm. Truly wondrous. What was his name again? Uh, Arnold. Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. But um, or as I call him, Samuel L. Jackson. I thought you were gonna say Arnold. Arnold. Because of the arm. That part was so strange. Yeah, that I like that pun. I gotta hand it to you. That was a good hey. one. Yo, this is the Agent Cody Banks guy, Pog. Yeah, I didn't even know that until that stream. But he'd, uh, that's, that that sucks that he like he was describing like how uh, Robert now how how you can have an idea at the core and then by the time it goes it gets chewed through the entire system it turns into something monstrous and horrible and not at all what you want it. Mm. Not that Agent Cody Banks is some terrible film. But I haven't seen it. Maybe it's good. I haven't seen it either. Who knows? It could I be. I think I stuff. have seen it, but obviously that would have been like close to when it came out. I couldn't tell you anything about it. Frankie Muniz is in it. That's all I know. Yeah. Hey, Fab. Big fan for a long time. I have two questions. One: How can you objectively measure the quality of pacing in a work? Um, I've often talked about how that one's really tough because. Most people appeal to how they feel. And then uh, the way I've tried to move on from that is like information per time. But even then, there's, there's suitable moments where you should have low information per time. As in like one very big important thing is happening. And we don't need yeah. to have lots of other things. Yeah, I think that uh, you don't want to have scenes that don't give you anything. Or scenes that are overly redundant, uh, scenes that maybe just don't give you any information. Like if you could cut a scene and it just doesn't really do anything, you know that that could be a part of it. Uh, you want to be identif you want to be able to identify what any sort of conversation or um, uh, a piece of world building or whatever it is. You know, it should be able be it should be doing something. It should be performing something. To give a, an example that came up in one of my earlier videos about um, ukulele, 
everyone was saying that the Q&A portion that you get between levels was destroying the pacing because you'll go through a whole level of solving puzzles, uh, different kind of combat, all this collectibles, fun, fun stuff, and then they'll just drop this bullshit on you. You have to answer a bunch of questions, and then once you're done with that, you go back to doing the thing you were enjoying. So it kills the pacing. And, like, a lot of people were echoing it, and I was just sitting there thinking to myself, like, I, I don't know, it's, it seems pretty good for pacing, that you get this huge blast of all these different kinds of uh, collectible-related things, moving around the world, puzzle-solving, combat, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, at the end, the Q&A is about the world you just went through. So it's like, hey, you've done it, and now, do you remember what, you know, this person said? Or do you remember how many blue balls you had to collect for the big old flim-flam? And, uh, you know, you can, I can't remember how it works. I think if you fail it, you have to do it again. Um, or, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly. But basically, I was trying to make the argument that, like, how do, you, how do we determine whether or not this is good for pacing or bad for pacing when you can make a pretty good argument both ways? Like, I, I really don't even know. Um, so the truth really is that pacing is complicated. To say that something is well-paced or poorly paced is not easy. No. Um... Because even when people appeal to the notion of, well, a scene needs to achieve something, right? Well, what, what a scene achieves can be really, you know, that, that can be hard to quantify. Like, if, if you have a scene where you're just sort of moving through an area, or a character is moving through a location, um, and seemingly nothing is clearly being achieved, it could just be building atmosphere, what happens if you've got a long, sort of quiet stretch because you're trying to build tension? But, like, you're not necessarily advancing much by way of character, but you're building a vibe. Um, well, yeah, when I tried I... to highlight all the fluff in the Snyder Cut, the responses I kept getting was, like, he doesn't know what tension building is. Yeah, um, now, of course, <laughs> uh, to, to some extent, you know, things can get either really excessive in terms of being protracted or incredibly fast. Um, but honing in on, like, what is good or bad pacing, that's really tough. And I think it can vary depending on the person. How many people think that Blade Runner is too slow? A lot of um, people do, yeah. A lot of people think Blade Runner is too slow. A lot of people would probably say the same thing of films like Lawrence of Arabia or Citizen Kane as well. Um, but I mean, I don't know. It doesn't like the problem is that if you say that to somebody and they say, "No, I was I was captivated the whole way through." Almost seems like the conversation is dead in its tracks. Like I thought it was poorly paced. I disagree. Like, it's, it's kind of hard to prove to somebody that, no, you were actually, you know, disengaged or, or bored by what was happening. It's not really something you can prove to a person, you know? I've actually, uh, I remember I was talking about this, like, potentially years ago, that I was bored is, like, the lowest tier, quote-unquote, criticism, because it's actually basically yep. nothing. And I'm not trying to throw shade, I've said it before. Um, it's usually as an intro to want to say something else. Tier two of I was bored is often, it's badly paced. Yep. Because it's like... I don't have to actually say anything. I can just say that, and that well, sounds better than I was bored. <laughs> yes, because I think everybody accepts that boring is, like, hyper, hyper subjective. Yeah. Um, whereas when you say, well, it's poorly paced, that's a little bit more authoritative. Um, but at the end of the day, I was bored and it's badly paced more or less mean the same thing unless you can provide a real explanation for why you feel that way. Um... And I think that's I think it's really difficult a lot of the time with pacing, um, yeah, to hone in on anything concrete. So I would say generally avoid appealing to pacing. Um, just focus on like what's being achieved on a on a scene by scene basis, and whether it's working or it's not working. It's almost like and um, then oh, go for it. I was gonna say it's almost like you throw it in as like a potential interesting thing to have. Say for example, I was set talking about Shazam. If um if I said oh that was poorly paced and Mel goes yeah and then you go no I don't think so why what what are you what are you thinking about when you say that and then I say oh just so many things happen so quickly like they don't really let anything breathe like think about and then I name thing 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 and I go and that was over the span of one minute then you might be convinced or you could go no I think they gave plenty of time to understand that you're making it sound faster when really you know blah 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 like it can cause interesting conversations I think. Um, uh, I think it can, for sure, but when people get so fixated on that as, like, the crux of their claim for yeah. why a film is good or bad, um, tends to derail conversations, because it's just a really, really difficult thing to, uh, quantify. Mm -hmm. Uh, their second question was, what separates a mediocre slash bad filler episode from a great one? 
I mean, uh, uh, everyone's I, definition of filler is different, so we've got to get that sorted first. Yeah, um, I mean, really, I don't think it being filler matters that much, honestly. Um, well, we'd probably give the same answers that we'd give for what makes a piece of media good. Yep. Uh, the fact that it's filler doesn't really enter into it. It just happens to be filler, or it's not filler. If, um... <laughs> If we're going with there's a grand plot and there's an episode of the television show that doesn't relate to it in any way, shape, or form, then it's going to have the same rules, like you just said, of, of storytelling, basically. Uh, if it's one character who's just sitting down reading a book or something in a room and you're like, well, that's automatically going to be bad. It's like, no, 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 no. You don't know that. Give it a chance and stuff. But a lot of people will just say, fuck that episode, it was filler. And... uh huh. You know, yeah, yeah we, we talked about this, I think, with the Last of Us coverage, which is like, filler is more complicated than that, and some of my favorite episodes of Buffy and Angel would be considered filler, so. Um, and of course, what are, what are sitcoms, if not filler, like, consistently, all the time, like, sitcoms that don't really have broad, overarching, serialized narratives? Yeah. You know, any given episode of The Simpsons isn't going to get you any closer to some, like, end point for that show, but, I mean, it's all worthwhile. Because at the end of the day, whether or not it's valuable to you kind of isn't contingent on how much it advances the plot. What makes it meaningful is how much you enjoyed it, ultimately. So, well, hopefully that helps. Mm. This is an unexpected surprise. I hope you do more breakdowns of classic movies. Perhaps we will. Maybe. The irony of the movies saying people are bored of dinosaurs is that Nostalgia Critic wanted the films to go that direction but was mad that the new dinosaurs were also boring. Oh my god, kill me. Please don't tell me that's something he says. Like they Wait, need to make the dinosaurs... What am I... What am I... The, 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 by what they've just described, it's the Nostalgia Critic says that the future of Jurassic Park should have been more interesting dinosaurs, but the ones they actually went with weren't very interesting. Oh... We just oh just we just need more interesting dinosaurs because well, you know T Rexes and Velociraptors and all that stuff is just not interesting enough. That's a, I feel like Jeez. what what does it mean for an animal to be interesting or not? Whether or not I mean, they're uh, doing something, it's the same zoo like mentality so many people have, isn't it? Uh when they see a yeah, lion just like lying there and they're like, "Hey, that's hey. not what you're supposed." to even though that's what animals do, like, for 90% of their time, is just be sedentary. Yeah. Um, in any case, I don't know what Doug necessarily thinks about Jurassic Park. Like I said, I'll go have a little look-see at that at some point. See, if it's, <laughs> uh, see how egregious it may or may not be. I don't know. <laughs> oh, hmm. please, Mauler. I would kill for a video series covering the newer films with you. Well, I, I did Fallen Kingdom. Um... Dominion might happen someday. I'm not going to deny that. I, won't, I also wouldn't be against going back to uh, the first one. That's quite a movie oh, as well. Jurassic World, you mean? Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah, okay, that film's pretty bad, and I get the impression that that film kind of hasn't gone through the TLJ treatment. Uh, not TLJ, uh, yeah, Force Awakens right, treatment. Yeah. Well, like, Force Awakens is kind of generally accepted to have been bad. Uh, I don't know what people think about like Jurassic World. Hmm. I don't know if anyone remembers it. It's just <laughs> yeah, what, what is there to that. you know pull away, kind of, but it's, it just doesn't have any staying power. Mm. Gosh, this thing was my childhood, along with the Walking with Dinosaurs series, and it's still dear to me. Glad I caught y'all live. Also, hi rags. Hello. Fun fact: in the Jurassic Park original novel, the companies, sorry, the compies, I guess is maybe a species, eat a baby alive. Also, Doctor Hammond, they were. Oh, I guess they mean also, because it's full stop, and then also Dr. Hammond. I guess they mean he got eaten too. They were also venomous with poison that made you sleepy. Wow. Spooky. I think Robert was saying uh, there's a couple of different things that happened in the book. Yeah. Nobody, uh, nobody wants to talk about Jurassic Park being inaccurate to the source, though, do they? Um, Maybe they do. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to point out that, like, Probably that seems not. to be the... the of a lot of conversations about adaptations these days, but nobody's going to be touching Jurassic Park for that. Yeah, I don't think people are very, uh, don't think people are very consistent when it comes to the adaptation argument. I would rather a, say, Rags, nobody's on... fucking read Jurassic Park the book. That's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing, I have read Jurassic Park the book, but it was so long ago, I just can't remember a lot of it. Mm -hmm. 
There seems to be a lack of variety of dinos in Jurassic World. Before implementing hybrids, how about making different species or more realistic dinos? I don't know. There's, there's so many for them to use. Being like, yeah, but Jurassic Park did all the cool ones, like Triceratops, Stegosaurus, and T-Rex, and Velociraptors. And be like, half of that is the movie making them cool and showing them and stuff. Like, you got it was an incredible you have so library. much. You didn't see any, like, Stegosauruses. Not really, or, no. and, and the tri Triceratops we got was just a sick one on the ground. Exactly. This, you know? It bugs me to no end. You've got an enormous actual history of dinosaurs to be able to use, but you've also got, like, used the current ones in different ways. Because they can't make a fucking Jurassic film without putting a T-Rex in it anyway, so they know that that still draws people in. It's not like people are bored of the T-Rex. If people are bored of a T-Rex, you have failed miserably as a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, you made a T-Rex boring. I don't know how you managed that, but you did. Jurassic Park movie where humanity goes extinct, dinosaurs take over the world, and then evolve into sapient human-like dinos who then make a Jurassic Park with humans repeating the cycle. <laughs> oh, God. What? So instead of Jurassic Park, it's humans. It's with humans. Human Park. They're all trapped. Well, there. I was going to say Human Park, but remember, Jurassic is is a an era. So, but we haven't named that era anything cool, I guess. The Human Era Park? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess maybe it would be Human Park then. Officially, the current epoch is the Holocene, which began 11,700 years ago after the last major ice age. Oh, okay. Then I guess it would be Holocene. So, yeah, epoch. We're, the Holo we, are in, we, are, we are members of the Holocene epoch. That sounds cool. Neat. The Holocene epoch. Uh, at Mola, he's talking about the Tyranid ecosystem that consumes planets in Warhammer 40k, super advanced planets that devour all the soil nutrients for harvesting by the Tyranid warships. Okay. I'm not familiar with Warhammer 40k, I'm afraid. They're like the Zerg of the Warhammer franchise, I guess. And what are the Zerg? <laughs> they're like the... Are they like spooky... the Borg? They're... No, they're like the... They're like the... The, the 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 bugs the the, the Starship Starship trooper, trooper bugs, bugs hey, okay. of the the starcraft world uh read the member chats first please they disappear and that's part of why we're doing it this way from now on which will sound the same to those at home but for me i gotta chop up all the pieces that they come in because until youtube fixes that i guess thanks youtube always a legend for this these sorts of things wings quote of the day Crying, chair squeak, dog whimpers. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, familiar with that one. <laughs> well, I, I was I figured it was that one, yeah. Unless there's another instance of that that I'm unfamiliar with. Maybe he's running out of quotes finally. He's had quite a quite a How can you run hundreds. out of wings quotes? I don't know. Maybe it's possible. I I, I wouldn't want to yeah. assume. Um Watch Primal. It's a fascinating story of blended eras of animals. You can start at episode one or skip to season two, episode five, for the thesis of the show. Yeah, that's the uh, show. I think that's what they would be referring to. I need to watch it. I've I hear that it's cool. Hmm. I hear that it's good too, but I have not seen it. Alrighty. I can't stand when people downplay all the effort that goes into CGI today, like it still takes tons of effort and time, and to be honest, the effects here don't look good, they're impressive, but to downplay the time it takes, you know? The effects oh, here don't uh, look good? I don't know if I agree with that. Even I, I think that Jurassic that. Park has aged quite well. Sure, it doesn't look like it came out today, yeah. but it's really impressive for a film that is 30 years old this year, how good it looks. Um, it's yeah. really impressive. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think uh, I think that it's important to be pointed in terms of like criticism of the current sort of media landscape and use of visual effects, um, because yeah, visual effects are a tool, just like practical effects, um, and just like there are good practical effects, there are good visual effects. There are plenty of films with great visual effects. Um, if anything, all the Avatar two sort of proved was that it really is a matter of time constraints that are seriously hampering what we see from, like, Marvel. Because Avatar 2, like, that film looks incredible. Consistently. The equivalent, yeah. I think, is that if we had several examples of the Balrog-type situation, and then we had yep. a bunch of creatures, like, from Dead Space 1991. Remember that guy? 
Yeah. Uh, that just kept happening in all these movies. And then every once in a while you get a Balrog and you're like, man, that CG looks so fucking... They need to stop relying on puppets. Puppets are done. Puppets need to stop. Mm -hmm. Like, And that's what seems to be happening. People, And it's like, no, no, no. Puppets can be amazing. Like, absolutely they fantastic. They can be legitimately super cool. We don't need to shit on the whole thing. We need to shit on, like, the practices where they force people to make, like, intense CG. I still remember that stupid Black Panther fight where it looked, like, yeah, it looks distractingly so awful. awful. <laughs> like, it was like, what the yep. hell? And I mean, we had it in Quantumania, right? Cassie running there. Yeah, this strong. has been going for so... Terrible. What is that, like, probably six years that they've been doing this, like, kind of horror show with uh, CG? It seems to... It seems like, um... It seems like it was Black Panther was kind of the beginning, because... I don't remember a Marvel well, movie before that where we went, Ugh, at the CG. No, because you know? Doctor Strange had some pretty cool uh, yeah. effects going on with, like, the environments and stuff. Civil Wars are pretty well integrated. Um, yep. I remember Spider-Man Homecoming looking pretty good. Oh, right, Thor. Thor Thor Ragnarok might have been when it, it was like, ooh, that's not as good. Like, Hella. Hella, yeah. The costume. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then you had, again, we saw what, what really focused, lengthy post-production time uh, yielded in terms of Thanos in Infinity War mm -hmm. and Endgame. Like that's it's really well uh well integrated, but yeah, I don't know. The last couple of years in particular, it's been it's been bad. Um, but then, but again, you can look at other films that have, have done a really good job, like uh like Avatar. Yep. So CG, it's a tool, like you said. Yep. There's plenty of good uses. It's just on the Marvel side, Jesus. Um. The Dilo was worked on by one guy, and it was his first creature that he had to bring to life. That scene still holds up, in my opinion. I mean, I'm assuming he was given the one time guy? and space he needed. Damn, one guy. That's in, that's kind of nuts. Good job, guy. <laughs> yeah, whoever you were, it's like, geez, it holds up. Yeah, that guy might be dead, but his work is like still able to be appreciated. Hell yeah. Uh, this movie made me love movies and dinosaurs. Yeah, this is one of those movies that makes you go, ooh, this movie thing's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, cinema's pretty neat. Takes your way to magical worlds. Uh, also, there is talk about a Jurassic Park prequel. I'm terrified. I'm supposed to take place... It's supposed to take place around 80 to 84. How bad do you think it could be and how good do you think it could be? Depends who's making it. I mean, it could be good. It could be bad. But yeah, as was mentioned, it depends on who makes it and if they give a shit. Because a lot of the times, whether people seem to have a particular passion or a care for what they're doing, that's a big part of it. We'll see about that one. Absolutely love your complete breakdowns. Perfect for a workday. Mongos for life. That's, that's the team Mongos. that I have on Adam and Sitch is the Mongos. The Mongos. But, uh, glad to hear it. Mongos. It's taking me three years to go from episode 1 to 200, and by gum I will get up to date on your curly whirly butt munches, and I've been enjoying it all the way. Also, hi Fringy, Kick Rags, and Bang Mauler. Oh my goodness. Never. I will never. Well, hi there. Um, interesting message, of course. Uh, fun facts, Sam Jackson's death was cut because of a storm destroying equipment. Also, all Dilophosaurus in the G JP series are juveniles. Adults are six times 20 foot. So, 120 foot, is that what you're saying? Or, or six, six by 20? 20 feet? I assume that's what they mean, because yeah, 120 right. feet is... Uh, I don't think I believe that. They get to be big boys. Yeah. Uh, hashtag nerdrotic raid. Hello, massives. Great to see you breaking down another great movie. Oh, yeah. Hi, and yeah, thanks. I hope you enjoy. Uh, just wanted to thank you guys for arousing my interest in objective media criticism and the craft of storytelling. Keep doing the Ooh. Don's work, high rags. Hello. Yeah, you bet. Really glad that we could, uh, at least in a way, sort of introduce you to this concept we have of ours. That has made us so many, so many friends over the years. <laughs> Exclusively friends. Exclusively friends. We're beloved. Reminder that the life of Pi is 90% CGI. Dude, this, I, I didn't feel it's annoying that I have to defend CGI in certain moments. It's like, why am I having to do this? CG is, like, amazing. We all know it can be yeah. amazing. 
Well, it is kind yeah, of interesting that, because, uh, I mean, especially adoring video games, it feels like it would be very strange to really love and respect video games as a medium and then not like visual effects. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, I mean, what are, what are video games if not a sen- Well, I mean, it's all computer-generated imagery. <laughs> exactly. And, I mean, goddamn, like, the way that games can look uh, is really cool across, you know, like, the broad spectrum of games that are trying to be hyper-realistic or hyper-stylized, cartoonish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A shilling for the dynometer. Thank you very much. Or a dynometer? Is that what it would be? Oh, uh, I guess because they put dino dash meter, so I took it as like dino meter. Like a thermometer. Dynometer could thermometer. very well be dynometer. Yeah. yeah, I think if it if it was to catch on, I think people would start calling it the dynometer, like a thermometer, and the altimeter. I assume so, yeah. Uh, Robert's point reminds me of how Independence Day uses stereotypes for each character as a shorthand and then develops the character from there, like the crazy UFO guy being the stereotype but with extra variables. I haven't seen it in a long time. All I know I is the... I don't recall Independence Day having particularly well-fleshed-out characters. I don't actually want to make a claim one way or the other because I haven't seen it in so long. All I remember is that it's very well-favored in general. And uh, Red Letter Media get themselves in trouble whenever they talk about it, because they hate it. Is that film generally well favored? Is it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, it might be. I guess it's because for me, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, Roland Emmerich. I like that movie. I enjoy it, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Hating on Roland. That man gave us the Moonfall movie, so why don't you back oh, up? What a film. Yeah. Oh what no, I mean film. I like I like some of his films. I mean, I like The Day After Tomorrow. Um, I really like The Patriot. Uh I don't I like twenty twelve though. <laughs> twenty twelve is the one that annoys me a lot. Um BBT laughs at nerds and nerd culture. It's mean-spirited and awful as well as not funny most of the time. I hate that it's so successful and popular. Oh, Big Bang Theory, right. Oh, well, I mean, <coughs> the, the butt of the joke is, ha, huh, you like Babylon 5 or Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> ha, ha, loser. And Aren't then, you lame? Yeah, there's some people at home like, <laughs> I know someone who likes those things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they suck, but I'm like, not going to okay. tell them. I'm just going to watch this show. Eddie is a hero, and I think it uh, i think it was for real dangers? I'm not sure what that means, but Eddie was a hero, that's true. Uh, Nedry should come back in Jurassic Park 8. Nobody's ever really gone. Exactly. <laughs> we didn't actually see him die. It was just implied heavily. Yeah. And it was very strongly story. implied. He could have he could have successfully fought it off and snuck off the island. And then they do a, it's possible. They they make like one of those stupid Marvel spin-off shows and it's just called Nedry. <laughs> Nedry. <laughs> I guess a you Jurassic should just call Park it Dennis. Story. <laughs> yeah, that would make it funny. Oh, yeah, Dennis. A <laughs> Jurassic Park tale. Uh, highly recommend reading the book Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. The tone is much more horror novel than dinosaur adventure. Plus, clever girl Aussie guy lives. Oh. Man, the more I'm hearing about the book, the more I'm thinking, like, why haven't people complained that it's it shits on the source? You know, when you change uh, tones... Because the movie's so... Nice. The yeah, movie's everybody so likes good. the movie so Because the movie's much. so good. That is the, the correct so answer. Uh, Imagine trying to say Jurassic Park is bad because it... It's on the source. No one will take you seriously. They'd be like, Wrong. "Well, maybe they'll make the weird argument of yeah, but people know about the film more than the book, so the the film, in a sense, supersedes the book as like the primary source." An argument you do not want to make because most of the public now knows Iron Man as his portrayal in the MCU, not comics. Well, most people know the vast majority of uh, comic book characters by their films rather than their comic books. Mm -hmm. The longer that the MCU goes on, the more that you would have to appeal to the MCU as your primary source. So, and nobody don't wants do to it. do that. <laughs> oh, that's right, don't do it. Um, a capital ship would need to turn slowly, though, because a mile-wide ship will be a meat grinder for the people inside it. With fighter jets, the pilot is in the center of gravity and can survive the smaller spin. 
Thank God for inertial dampener technology. I don't know why that would have come up. Did we talk about that at some point? Um, I'm not sure. We talked about it in, um, uh, I, oddly enough, the last Mando episode. Mm. But uh, I don't exactly know what that's referring to. That, though that is true. Um, if you have a ship um, that, that is very long, then depending on the, the, your yaw or pitch or the way that the ship moves, the people who are on the edges of the ship where it's experiencing the most, uh, the, or sorry, the high, not the highest speed, the highest change in speed, um, those are the ones who are really going to get the, um, yeah, so uh, uh, it's an interesting thing to uh, consider for like ship design. Yeah, if you, the, the closer you keep people to the middle, the less they will be affected by the ship, like rotating or spinning. So of course, speeding up, slowing down, um, you know, changing directions quickly will still uh, affect them, which is why I think, you know, uh, like Star Wars has like, or Star Trek has things like inertial, uh, inertial dampeners and the artificial gravity is in, you know, sometimes alluded to in sci-fi stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, little things that you could just add in as throwaway lines or um, it could make for really clever, potentially super grisly uh, ways to uh, kill enemy combatants is to like hack their uh, inertial dampeners inside of it um, and they don't know so that when they make suddenly make a turn or a, or a, a move or they take off, you know, everyone inside is killed by the, you know, the sudden movement of the ship that they're not attached to. Like you make it um, register as though it's functional to the command or whatever. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of why I think if you wanted to make a a science fiction world but have things be very sort of old school, quote unquote, then you say things like uh, hacking is so prevalent and, you know, disrupting ship uh, technology is so prevalent in war that they want to hardwire and keep everything localized and um, as, uh, I guess, analog as possible to prevent that kind of a thing. That way you can excuse having people on guns on the side of the ship and things of that nature. And otherwise it would probably all be completely computerized. Hmm. As a paleontologist, I could have told you all about the dinos, in general, not just inaccuracies. Also, my friend and former co-worker is a huge JP fan, so don't let him know how much you hate the sequels. Oh, dude, I know plenty of people love The Lost World. I know a lot of people think that Jurassic Park 3 is great as well. And then there are people who like Jurassic World, who are like, yeah, Fallen Kingdom. I've seen that there are people who are angry at me for my Fallen Kingdom take. It's fine. It's totally fine. Everyone has their own... Big it's old right. faves and preferences. It's great, even. I haven't seen Jurassic Park 2 since I was a kid, and 3 since about that time. I haven't seen those in ages, so... Uh... Well, having recently rewatched The Lost World, it's, uh, it's quite flawed. Mm. Always uh, remembered it, it that way. It, it was like... Like, surely it's not as bad as I remember, life. and then I rewatch it, and I'm like, mmm. It's, it's quite flawed, uh, but it's not still not like what the jurassic yeah. world <laughs> films are can't speak to dominion but i imagine the dominion is uh <laughs> not very good uh, he's trying to describe a blend of effects that can draw your senses into belief what we'd call immersion in a word as much as that's fair the problem is everyone has a different line for what will make them believe any given thing so I love to talk about like, hey, they do this thing to make it feel more, you know, even down to like in video games when they make guns more accurate to like how they work in real life and get like original sounds that are all taken from the guns in real life. It's so, like all this stuff helps you really feel like uh, stuff is more like you're there. And it's like it's stuff that I would appreciate too. But the, the fact is, it's like, you know, if you if you make a claim like you won't believe something like the prequels, but you will believe Jurassic Park. It's like, what about the people who totally <laughs> buy into the prequels, though? Which there are plenty of, you know, and I never want to take that away from anybody's personal experiences. There's always someone who was, like, heavily... I saw comments about people being super immersed into Shazam because finally they don't have to watch, like, a shitty dour movie about whatever or, or um, even, like, trying to put it above Marvel films in terms of, like, it doesn't have... It commits to the comedy. It doesn't have awkward tonal shifts or something. It's just like, eh, sure. I, I don't mean, think... we saw... <laughs> I saw a tweet just the other day um, of someone saying that, you know, it's been four days and I haven't heard one single valid complaint about uh, Shazam 2. 
you know, that movie's really, the movie's really incredible. People are just not seeing it for what it is. They don't yeah. have enough media literacy. Mm-hmm. It's like people just live in these delusional worlds. Well, and you, as much as they wouldn't be able to argue, like, in any way of uh, coherency in the script, they will still tell you, and they're not lying, their experience was incredibly positive, and they were super immersed in the movie, and it's like, all right. You know, not yeah, looking to, that's the thing. Okay. It's like, there's nothing more for me to say. It's just like, yeah, okay. All right, good stuff. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, fun fact, Jurassic Park and Westworld were both created by the same author, Michael Crichton. Too bad both of them suffered terrible written, terribly written sequels. Well, yeah, uh, as is the same well, for ninety percent of IPs. Yeah, I think Michael Crichton directed uh, Westworld as well as writing it. He was involved in uh, oh. at least somewhat, I think, in the show as well. I don't know. Uh, when did when did he though. pass away? Did did didn't he pass away? Or was it two thousand and uh, it was either two thousand eight or two thousand and eighteen? I don't know why I've got that, hmm. but. If he died in 2008, then he wouldn't have been involved in the show, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, no, though. Yeah, maybe I'm mixing something up with someone else, because uh, I didn't even know he died, so. It's a fascinating conversation to have, but the point is subjective. Immersion comes in many forms, from person to person, and it's all down to what they've experienced. There's no answer to this point. I still, I'm, I'm happy to discuss, like, what elements can help immersion. You know, like, the amazing puppetry and the movements of the dinosaurs. Like, I would add to, of course, I would, I would use that along with a bunch of other things to say why this will immerse a person. But, you know, if someone walks up to you and says, what the fuck do you mean? I was never, I never thought this was anything other than just some crappy puppets. You'd be like, oh. Yeah, well, I mean, all right. <laughs> you know? be done with that conversation to prove or disprove how yeah, he felt You compliment it, you the know? filmmaking techniques, but ultimately, you know... You believe it or you well, don't. Well, everybody has a different line for yeah. uh, immersion and suspension of disbelief. Like, everybody's got a line. The more relevant part is that everybody does have a line. Um, but yeah, where that line is drawn varies from person to person. Uh, remember when we were talking about Jurassic Park? Pepperidge Farm remembers. We did go on Yeah, some those were tangents. the days. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Eddie getting eaten gives tension to Nick when he goes to the village alone. The raptors and T-Rex don't care who you are. Moments later, raptors are in the village. Is Nick dead? We don't know yet. Yes, I needed to see a heroic, innocent man get torn to shreds to know that T-Rexes are dangerous. That's true. Because up to that I point, I thought that T-Rexes would chill. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. they would chill. I don't know. Why? <laughs> Why do you... Yeah, the... it, you're right. As a... Uh... As many young Earth creationists say, those massive teeth are just used to chew up tough melons and fruits because, of course, they didn't eat meat before the fall of man. I don't even... I'm trying to think of, like, if there's anything... Could you make any argument about something that's distasteful in a film without someone just going, well, you know what? It's in order... Like, the, the example from 2012, for you, I could be like, it's to show the dangers of the ship, or it's to show the... Da- like that's how, right. You're just like, okay... Because the fact they said the T Rex doesn't care that Eddie's a hero, it's like I know, like what? Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I, know. I, I, yeah, that's kind of one of those instances of um, are we are we having a real conversation here, or are you just looking to get some dunks? Because yes, mean, I know that the T Rex is not aware that this is a story <laughs> in which there are people who are doing heroic things and people who are doing dastardly things. I know that. Mm-hmm. The first shot of the T-Rex it's... is so iconic. Yeah. Most of the shots yeah, of the T-Rex is. are iconic in this, honestly. Yeah, most of them are, actually. It's uh, it's very much a case where it is really leveraging film as a medium, you know, where each shot is interesting. Uh, Transformers is a perfect example of aneur... aneurysming? Aneurysming? Aneurys... Hmm. Never heard I know of that aneurysm, word. but aneurysming. Aneurysming on CGI. Maybe they just Is mean it just going like, overboard, like a brain aneurysm, aneurysming, like an overload almost. Or? Well, because that was the sentiment when the even the first one came out, when it went. You were just like, I can't, well, I can't even understand what the fuck's how, happening. Like, <laughs> considering how simple and straightforward the designs are for the original cartoon. Yeah. Like, everybody's got very clear silhouettes. Uh, if anything, they're quite blocky. 
um, mm -hmm. rather than being, like, overly complicated. And yeah, you know, like, in those films, they'd have those long, like, 30 seconds watching, like, oh, yeah, and then, yeah, it's a bit, uh, a bit over the top. But and, now they've uh, they've sort of gone back on that. I mean, we're, yeah. we're seeing it now with like Bumblebee and the new Transformers that's coming out this year. Well, the big of problem actually trying to emulate the style of the original cartoon. The big problem came in when you had two of them or three or four, whatever, in a big pileup, and you're like, I literally can't see where one ends and one begins. I have no idea what's happening. Especially when their color schemes were uh, deliberately pared back yeah. a lot of the time. I guess Bumblebee and Optimus Prime still t uh tended to stand out but everybody else kind of blurred together mm -hmm. but yeah now they're they're moving away from that they're actually making them look like the uh the 80s cartoon which i personally prefer i, I like those designs uh rip the real life pave 2023 to 2023 not entirely sure what you mean by that but gone uh but yeah not forgotten. i don't know uh muller i don't know if you remember this but don't feed the gays now, that, that's a quote. I can't, I think there was some kind of joke that you'd have, like, gays in a zoo or something, and don't feed the gays. I, I, that's, that's the vague memory. But, uh, you never know when things are out of context. They could be anything. The actor for a lawyer did a sketch on college humor about him being expendable. It was pretty funny. Fair enough. Did either of you ever watch college humor? Yeah, I watched the Batman sketches. They was, I think they're still funny. Ah, I, don't think I, I was really only did. asking because I never did, really, at all. Um, like I said, they're the only ones I can really remember. I think I would have seen some other ones, but nothing... nothing Early consistent. internet era for me was much more, uh, like, Newgrounds sort of cartoons and kind of, um, yeah. video Similar game stuff. Me. Yeah, I watched all that, and Channel Awesome, and YMS back then, and of course Red Letter Media. Big old I never watched consumer. really uh, Channel Awesome. It was cringe back then, and <laughs> I remember just thinking to myself, like, amazing that these are the lads that are like setting the setting the bar on. Because like the, we have to do that at some point. I've told people we totally will. We'll cover the Channel Awesome films, um, like Kickassia and the one where they do like sci-fi or fantasy, or whatever. I remember when they were releasing, I was just like, "Fuck, these are so cringy." And yet, people uh, are, like, super excited and happy about them. And then you find out they um, were, like, a nightmare to make. Right. And now they have the reputation they do of basically everyone hates them, including the people who made them. But I, I what, like, the films or just or everything? Just everything, yeah. Because, like, it's it's uh, connected directly with all the trouble, like, I think it's called, was it called Change the Channel? Hashtag Change the Channel, right? That was the like, big controversy. I, like I said, I have no idea. I'm not not really familiar with Channel Awesome. I remember there was like, complaints that, like, they didn't properly cater or supply water. Uh, the actors were oh, paid. You know, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Right, just right. like, oh, no. Like, um, it's my birthday tomorrow. Can I get a happy birthday from Froggo, Good Boy, and Longman? Yes, happy oh, birthday. have a really great birthday. Yeah. I hope your well, birthday was great. Yeah, belated happy birthday. Belated. But... Hope you had a good well, one. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, you got Metroid Prime EFAP when? I wonder how that would look. Um, that would be interesting because I, I'm not, I, as, as I was speaking, I was kind of developing new thoughts on, a, on that <laughs> idea. <laughs> I think, uh, I guess, you know, we'd all play it again and then just talk about, uh, it would mainly be mechanics and world building stuff, be, I guess. I feel like it'd be worthwhile to just d delve into all of them, essentially, if that was something that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I almost feel like to prep for that, it would be, it'd be a good idea to basically play all of the Metroid games, or at the very least, also play Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. Um, so I'm just going to read this out as it's said, because I don't even remember exactly what was being discussed at this point. Rags is wrong about ecosystems. Niches don't change, but organisms can get better at filling them. After all, microbes used to be the entire biosphere. Ecosystems are the organisms, not the niches. I don't even know that's referring <laughs> to what I said. <laughs> I, don't, I got nothing for it. I just, yeah. Likewise. Um, it's at the point with this franchise where I cheer for the dinosaur. You can only make the same mistake so many times before I lose all sympathy. They kind of want you to do that. Like I said, with the, the T-Rex killing the villain in a lot of them, it's like, yeah, T-Rex, woo, good boy, that sort of thing. 
Because, uh, mm. yeah, I don't know. And I, just, I think it makes it a farce at that point. Well, I just saw Gavin McInnes piss on FNT. That's not what they mean by stream, Gavin. So how about them dinos? Yeah, the dinosaurs are cool. I love dinos. <laughs> Um, yeah, not the wisest decision on a live stream, but hey, you know what? Uh, that's what you get for inviting Gavin McInnes, I guess. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of funny, because, like, all I know about him is how much he just despises pop culture. It's like... Well, I think my first exposure to him was build a table as opposed to, I don't know, consume art. <laughs> I'm gonna keep consuming art. Fuck tables. I mean, so... I got plenty you know, of tables. Like, that yeah, I mean, I mean, what do we do? We really need more tables, <laughs> you know. Honestly, is I feel like we're in a table surplus. It's right just a now. general sort of sentiment. The president announces like an end to tables. We don't need any more. <laughs> an We've got enough. Tables. <laughs> or a tax on tables. Tables <laughs> specifically get taxed more. Every table maker all over Earth is like, I don't even want to make tables anymore. I want to. I want nah, to do you some know what? Stuff. Yeah, I, I want to build some cabinets. Yes, these cabinets. tables. You know, carpenters against tables. Oof. Yeah, that With sounds cats. like a yes. sounds like a film that's going to make. It. I was thinking that. Yeah, but more so, I was thinking about how much money that film would make at the box office. Billions, Ooh, at least. Right. Uh I mean, I mean, billions. Wow, really? You you reckon only billions? Well, I didn't I want to say trillions because I know everyone's gonna be like trillions. How's that gonna? It's like I don't think you understand the idea we're dealing with here. Yeah, this 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 film is worth as much as the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. This next one says, first time live." Hello. Oh, uh, like my birthday. Yeah. I guess I was alive before then. No, Point guys. Being, you I'm need really to see, glad that you were here. You need to see Patton do an EFAP on it. Someone has recommended this movie to us before. Oh, this 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 particular account, he he every single live stream I appear on, doesn't matter if it's any of the other places on the internet, he'll say go watch Patton. I'll he have really to see Patton to at see some this point. Movie, yeah. Looks like wow. Some point it'll probably happen, I guess. But uh, you know, you just got to fit in somewhere. That's how. Oh, Mola's overwhelmed with the love of fans. Smiley face. It does happen. Guys, uh, it can be awful nice sometimes. Don't let it go to your head. I shall't. I shall't. I grew up on Jurassic Park 3, comparing the raptor trap in 3 to the OG. So much more set up to how they get the hunter, versus when they kill the guy in 3 and use him as bait is more, oh, they did that smart trap, look. Man, that's stressing my memories. Is it that they have, I think it's a guy who's wounded? And they leave him on the ground in, like, an open area so that he can yell for help. And the raptors are waiting for people to help him so that they can then get... Uh, and I think what this comment is saying is that in the film, you're just like, oh, that's the thing they, they can do? Okay, yeah, they're smart enough to do that. All right. Meanwhile, in Jurassic Park, you know, uh, Alan Playing describes the whole thing well before we see it. Yeah. This thing, yeah. But hey, Saying maybe... how smart they are, yeah. Building up that as a, a, a possibility. Mm -hmm. the, dude, the, what's the one thing I think I really realized on this particular watch through of Jurassic Park? How much they build up the raptors before they get their huge sequence. Oh, yeah. Uh, Muller is like I don't the... even think we see one until um, uh, uh, Hunter Man spots one through the, through the woods. Is that the first time uh... we actually see one? I forget. I think you might be right, yeah. Or is that after one of them's uh, jump scares, Ellie? This is before he. Well, actually, I don't know which happens first because they're sort of happening really close remember. to each other. I don't. Yeah, I can't remember which actually happens first. Um, this one says Mola is like the sun orbited by Fringy and Rags. Well, I happen to think it's they're off doing their own things as well. But we're all little solar systems in the galaxy, providing light. I'm the moon. Hey, I mean, the moon's pretty cool. I like the moon. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm like a lovely moon planet, just orbiting around, just having a good old time. This one says, we appreciate RMB's contribution to the stream, with an exclamation point. That's good. I'm glad. Um, and this one says, I appreciate RMB too. 
This is just great positivity. That's what I think. Um, two. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rags and EFAP. How would you show a Chekhov's gun situation in a film without bashing the audience's uh, audience over their head and preventing them from expecting it and waiting for it? Basically, how do you make it subtle but not ass pulley? Uh, so an interesting way to do it is misdirection. Um, the example that I would provide is the one that is used in Archer, where Archer specifically has a gun that's called Chekhov. Um, obviously, most people... Well, not most people, but uh, plenty of people are familiar with the concept of Chekhov's gun. But, like, specifically calling this gun Chekhov, it kind of, like, just draws people's attention to the gun to the point that they ignore the actual Chekhov's gun, which is a cap, uh, it, which is a pen that is, uh, like, delivers a deadly neurotoxin, but the cap just falls off for no reason. And then that's actually what uh, is the major plot device later on in the episode. So that's a cool one, where... Um, in a sense, by beating people over the head with a false Chekhov's gun, you can seal the real Chekhov's gun really well. Wow. Uh, I was thinking, like, it's, you sort of reverse engineer it, I guess. It feels like, so at the end, the alien's going to burst through the ceiling and Grandma's going to get her gun that she has and she's going to shoot it in the head. But we want that to be a surprise. Why does she have a gun? Where'd she get it from? Like, maybe she has, like, an old collection that her husband left behind from his war stuff. And you're like, okay... And that's all, like, upstairs in a closet somewhere, and it's like, so how do we let people know that that exists? And it's like, well, you can talk about the histories and characters and stuff, but you don't want to be like, oh, man, all the things we kept from his old war days, like his gun! And they look at the screen. You, you want to be Another like... Another thing. Yeah, you, you name a whole bunch of things, and the gun is in there, as an example. And uh... You're making me think of something that is often a problem. Uh, whenever you have, like, a specific shot on an item, like, when they cut to a shot that focuses in on an item, like, in, a, in an otherwise normal scene of characters talking, you subconsciously register, ah, that's important. So, like, even the way that you frame something can uh, give it away. So, like, if it zooms in on a key item that somebody yeah. puts down, or the key item is, like, in frame, in clear focus while the characters are in the background, those sorts of things can subconsciously cue... And of course, that's kind of the point of those shots, but uh, <laughs> error on the side of caution, I would say, because uh, it can really give it away. The, I think um, I think that the easiest way to do it is to essentially cloak what really matters in amongst a bunch of other material. Hot Fuzz is a really good example of uh, a story that cloaks a lot oh, of God, important yeah. information amidst a bunch of other important information. Like, in a sense, because everything is so important... There's no specific, like, Chekhov's gun to hone in on. It's just persistent setup and payoff. You just don't know when. Um, well, yeah, the, the, I, I think, the annoying, I think like um, you said, reverse engineer. The hoodies, right? We get highlighted of them doing the spray tag and shit that's annoying at one point. And then, uh, you know, that's just among many of the things that they try and clean up in the town, uh, the village. And then and then later on when they all rush into her, um, her shop... You know, like, it's like, oh, we remember them. And they're the ones that spray can the, the security cameras. Yes, like, oh, and of yeah, course the of course. cameras themselves were set up in other scenes. Yeah, like, like that's the, the film, I nothing think. nothing to do with them. That might be the ultimate setup and payoff film ever. I don't know. There's probably a couple, but uh, that's gotta be Hot one of them. Hot Fuzz is one of the most tightly constructed films I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, if you want a good example of setup and payoff, just watch Hot Fuzz twice over. <laughs> and, then, and then you'll have a really good understanding of, of what that looks like. Yeah. Molly, you're perfect to review season three of Picard because you're not a Trekkie. I mean, that goes both ways, I guess. A lot of people will be like, well, why is he even here? While some people will be like, ooh, it's interesting to have someone who doesn't even know about Star Trek here. When you well, said cause... it goes both ways, I thought you meant was season three of Star Trek was ideal to review you because it's not a human. And then I'm like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is what came to my brain, and I was like, no brain, that's not what that means. I've seen a lot of discourse about that season. Many people getting angry at each other about whether or not we're allowed to say it's good. I'm sitting here, not having seen it, being a non track just being like, I hope, I hope that works out, Trek fans, whatever's going on over there. We're dealing with Mando right now. I just want to go back to Andor. Give me more. Season 2, please. Interesting mm -hmm. fact. Jurassic Park was the first movie to show us dinosaurs that looked real. Oh, yeah. So I've heard. So I have heard. That's what the word on the street is. 
Hello, all. My wife Hi. enjoyed fellowship. Our marriage survives another test. I only worry for her realization of Gimli's deep desire for Frodo to die. <laughs> I hope that she will be able to uh, make it. That's wild that that was... It would be so funny. fucking funny if unprompted the wife was like, why does why does the dwarf character want the hobbits to die so much? You're like, yeah. <laughs> I think the short ones would want to stick together. Yeah, oh my what the goodness. fuck? It's cutthroat. Jeez. Did you guys realize you're doing this on the year of the movie's thirtieth anniversary? Fun coincidence, if not. I yeah, did we not didn't know, know that because uh, I floated the idea just because <laughs> there was like a week where there wasn't any new releases. I think I just said, "Oh, how about like an old movie?" What about like, old releases? Fuck. It's yeah. been something that I, I didn't we've, we've tooled around with doing for a while, so it was a really great chance to have an experiment. Yeah, and uh, I find it immensely valuable to look at great films uh, from the past, and especially like the enduring legacy that they have and where it would have uh, come from. I want to see films from the future. Yeah. Well, you will soon enough. Woohoo. Oh, wow. The electric fence didn't work because it was in the middle of an amphitheater. This is my favorite part. I think... Amp these amphitheater? Are the, these... Well, I know this is my favorite part is a, is a reference. And then, whenever I see someone say in the middle, I am now paranoid that they're talking about that video we covered, like, years ago that said the middle is everyone's favorite part. That word has been ruined. Yeah, ruined. <laughs> There's no more middle. Tarnished word. No one knows. Uh, the T-Rex didn't attack the raptors to save the humans, it was a ter- Please don't tell me you think that's what we thought. Of course, that's- yeah. <laughs> like, I, have, I will sure. continue- Didn't, we, didn't we explicitly say that that's obviously not what happened? Well, I, I'm pretty sure we just said it was lucky as fuck. Yeah, like, yeah. That it, if anything, it's kind of a flaw. Yes, yes. So I'll read the whole thing. The T-Rex didn't attack the raptors to save the humans. It was a territorial dispute. The T-Rex wanted competition off its hunting ground. Dinos are not heroes. I just, I hope this is just a general thing you're saying and not at all in competition Perfect. with anything we were saying. Because no, I, I, I think I, that was your broad point was that they've almost misunderstood that scene so much. Yeah, that, I said they that, turned the T-Rex into the protagonist, essentially. Excluding the timing of it, that scene is the only one in the whole series that gets away with doing it properly, which is just a T-Rex eating raptors. That's all that's happening there. While in the other yep. ones, it's like the hero T-Rex kills the villain. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't worry. We we didn't we didn't think that. That's 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 n no problem. Uh, Fringy, are you a bird and therefore a dinosaur? Uh, well, I'm not a bird. But if I was a bird, I guess birds still count as dinosaurs. Do they? Oh, I'd have to check if that's a valid thing. To I, I think that they're often called basically modern day dinosaurs. Well, I mean, not as often as they're called birds or aves, obviously, but, you know. Birds can be spooky, like cassowaries, raptor-like. I wouldn't say that cassowaries are spooky. I think cassowaries are just, like, scary. normal, kind of scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> normal. But they're also kind of neat. Yeah. They're not, like, Lovecraftian. Well, in the same way, if you encountered or... a lion, like, if you encountered a lion just out on a walk, you'd probably be scared, but, like, it's yeah. not spooky. So I'm like, I know what that thing is capable of damaging me, yep. and I'm me. So, yeah, that's. An <laughs> and issue. I would like to not so, be damaged. Uh, yeah, that's, that's scary. Just good old classic fear for my safety kinds of stuff. In quotes, we won't break the glass ceiling, we'll break the wall. A quote inspired by Rings of Power metaphors. You know, you need to include the third part, which says we will then rebuild the wall. <laughs> which just makes it even more confusing. It's like, what and are you the talking about? Part, there is a wall inside me. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you know, Rags, that's a real quote. Uh, but we won't break the glass ceiling, we'll break the wall, and then we'll rebuild it. Oh, yeah, when was this from? This was from... Empower. Oh, right, because... The Marvel yeah. documentary series. Yeah. The quote that I still, to this day, I'm trying to figure out. I'm not quite sure what she means. Wait, it's good. Oh, right, knocking down... Right, well, because if you knock down the walls, the ceiling is just going to collapse on your head. Not if you rebuild the walls straight away. It's easier than... Which is rising... Which is, which is way easier than, like, rising up to crash through the ceiling, is to just bring the ceiling down to you. <laughs> yeah, there um, you go. Make everything shit. Maybe that's what that means. 
Well, it just seems like an instance where you thought, there's there's a metaphor, I'm going to make a better one, but you haven't really thought it through very well, and so you end up saying something confusing. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's all that comes across as to me. Also, calm down. <laughs> Hi, Rags. <laughs> Hello. Have any of you read L Fine Lads Red, Ayn Rand, and What Did You Think? Um... I've, I've I've read many of her works. I think I've read four books of hers. Um, we the Living, Anthem, The Fountainhead, and Atlas Shrugged. And I like them. I, I, I enjoyed them. Um, but, you know, I, I it's not like I read them and it completely revolutionized my philosophy on everything. I, was, you know, I read them and I was chill about it. I have not read them. Me either. I have not read Ayn Rand. There you go. Aye. We need to compare Rose TLJ versus Hammond's Jurassic Park. Savwatlov. Uh, what's the comparison? Rose T. What is it? Rose TLJ and Hammond Jurassic Park. Uh, what, what would Rose be the comparison Tico between the two? Hammond. I don't know. <laughs> That's all it says. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing what the uh, like sort of common element is for those characters. So Rose's thing would be, we save what we love, don't destroy what you the hate, stuff yeah. we hate. Um, Man, you remember how like Rise of Skywalker just totally disregarded her, <laughs> like completely. Yeah, they had to do a major attempt at course correction after. Yeah, uh, they like, still yeah. didn't. No, I mean, remember Rise they have um, awful. Ray tosses the lightsaber and Luke catches it. It's like, see, look, guys, he caught the lightsaber this time instead of throwing it. <laughs> Do you like us yet? Uh, uh, I was about to say Ryan, but that was JJ. JJ. Oh, dude, uh, yeah, Rise of Skywalker was something else. Nobody liked it. He hasn't it. made anything for a while, has he? Yeah, he's I mean, been sitting while, in the, the corner of shame years. for a while. Well, the corner of shame where he's been getting paid a lot of money by Warner Brothers for like three years <laughs> to develop yeah. and produce nothing so far. Uh, Hero T-Rex eats goat Leia raptors. Very well. And then Jurassic Park 3 ruined Grant's development. Everything that happens in that movie could have been done with Grant married and having kids even better with the plot. Yeah, they. I think they say like his relationship with Ellie got fucked up, and uh, I, I can't remember more of it than that. But I remember people being annoyed at that. Another example I can think of where they did that was Ted. Have you guys seen Ted and the sequel, Ted Two? I saw the first. I've not seen, seen the one. Ted or Ted Two. Well, so you would remember Mola that the central thrust of the narrative was the relationship between uh, Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis. Right. Um, and then they got together in the end and they got married. And then in the second one, because I think of scheduling conflicts, Mila Kunis couldn't do it. So it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, it didn't work out. <laughs> it's Man. just kind of this awkward, like, you know, like, I get it. You couldn't get her back. But, like, there's, there's kind of no getting around the fact that that was, like, the main goal of that character in that film. Mm -hmm. To just be like, yeah, they broke up. It's just not very satisfying, is it? I mean, Whoa, it's a comedy. People do it's break kind of like... up. They could have, like, played that as a comedic thing, that how she's never around. Oh, well, it's because uh, they had a new thing for Mark Wahlberg where he needed to get back on get back on that horse, you know? Um, and that was with uh, uh, Amanda Seyfried, who uh, they persistently said had golem eyes. They said that in the movie? Yeah, that was like a running gag. I think there was a part where, yeah, like Ted said, you have give us the ring, my precious eyes. Wow. Well, hey, if she was on board with it, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, there's no reason for her to be like insecure about the way that she looks. So, no, yeah, I'm know. saying wow in terms of just, uh, I, I, I wonder, she's probably like a really big, good sport about all that then. Cause she must be a really good sport, yeah. I could imagine an actress being like, fuck that. Uh... I hear that she was really good in uh, the the show that they made that was about Elizabeth Holmes, that she was in that. That she was, like, basically captured uh, that person very mm. well. So, yeah. 
I haven't. Yeah. I feel like I don't see her in much stuff, even though I know that she is in plenty of films. I think she had like TV a moment shows. of being in lots of more famous stuff, and then I agree. I feel like I haven't seen her in ages. She was in Mamma Mia, right? Yes. Yeah, and she was. Uh, she was in Les Mis, right? But a lot of people were in Les Mis. I don't remember if she was in it. I know Anne Hathaway, Russell Crowe, Hugh Jackman. I can't remember yes. anybody beyond that though. Well, I know. I know Russell Crowe was in it. Because that was one of the most contentious parts of that film, right? <laughs> it's quite well, memed. Isn't, isn't that for the meme where he's like staring out of a window or something? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think yeah, there are that a few is memes about Russell Crowe from that film. That's the one that comes uh, to mind uh, immediately as an image. Um, the memes. the uh, well, because the meme with that film in general it's, was that um, they were singing it while they were Javert. acting it, right? The Javert Javert, reaction. wasn't it? Isn't it Javert? Javert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think that's his name. It's French, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> jeez, that's not very culturally <laughs> sensitive of you, right? Look, this is the image their... I was talking about. Yeah, they got <laughs> right. yeah, the right. famous on, meme yeah. image. I don't know. I haven't seen the movies. So I don't know what the context is, well, but I always find this image amusing. Yeah, I, I, many... I know that his uh, his role in that film is one of the more contentious parts of that film. That uh. People aren't deciding on whether he did a good or bad job on uh, in that film. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that this was was memed, memed a lot. This is a very popular meme. I don't know what it is. It's just funny. <laughs> it's just very, very funny. What is uh? What do you think Russell Crowe's best performance is? A good question. The boring answer is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Of That's course, the boring I, wa I wanted to come up with something other than that. Well, he was pretty good in L.A. Confidential. Master, yes, and he Commander. was. I haven't seen Master and Commander, but I need to. I want to watch that film. Uh, what about Robin Hood? <laughs> I quite liked him in Three Ten to Yuma. I saw that, but I can't remember. Oh yeah, he was in Three Ten to Yuma. Yeah, that's right. I haven't hmm. seen. I haven't seen that film. What about his incredible role in Man of Steel? <laughs> oh, what? As, uh, as Jor-El. Uh, boy child man. <laughs> uh, um, hmm. He uh, played uh, Jekyll and Hyde in The Mummy. I liked him in that movie, The Nice Guys. That was a uh, shame. I like that movie. It's Shane Black who has destroyed some things I really like, but I like that <laughs> film. Don't worry, his his predator contributions will not be considered canon, I don't think. I no, I would imagine not. Remember how they were trying to set up a sequel that the film didn't well, like, make enough money? Prey, for example, is Prey didn't that pretend will, for a second. Move forward that, with that. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they make more with that, but what I'm saying is like Prey didn't give a shit about the Predator adding in. Well the Predator is kind of a DNA or whatever. The, the Predator is very much in the same slot as something like Terminator Genesis. Mm-hmm. Remember what James Cameron said, like, oh, yeah, this is the real sequel. The fuck was that? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said more about Dark Fate, and if you look at... Uh, the... Yes, he did. He's got more fingers in the Dark Fate pie than he even had in Genesis. I think he was a producer on, uh, he was a producer on Dark Fate. What an insult. And, you know... I guess what I'm saying is he said the same thing about both films. He said that he thought Genesis was, like, the continuation, but then it was Dark Fate and for at real. That point... and... Considering Avatar 2 as well, he's like, we need to have a sit down, James. We need to have a sit down um, and talk about some stuff. It's, it is kind of unbelievable. It is unbelievable that James Cameron, the man who created Terminator 2, would look at Dark Fate and go, yeah, this is a good idea. That is almost unbelievable to me. It's like Legion. Ridley Scott. What a lame name. I, Ridley Scott is, uh, I, I think Ridley Scott and James Cameron, they're like, I know, I know why you almost would compare them, but they seem different. Um, in in terms of like, I guess what you could call their decline. Yeah, like um, all things that are compared. I think because uh, the difference would be that like Ridley Scott just keeps making films. Like he's he's very consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, and unfortunately, it has sort of been a consistent uh, decline. But like he he makes a lot of films, whereas James Cameron, for whatever reason, has been like weirdly fixated on Avatar for like twenty years at this point. Yeah, and it's just not that interesting. Um, whereas it almost seems like Ridley Scott just keeps, you know, taking shots and then sometimes they land and unfortunately more often than not, they haven't been. 
Um, how to change my name because internet stalkers are weird. That's the first thing they say, which, yeah, that, mm, that, that sucks. That weird, annoying. annoying. Yeah. And then they said, oh no, Rob is gone with a sad face. He was very quiet early on. Did he end up speaking more later? Yes. Mm -hmm. He did indeed. He did so, indeed. On a rewatch, you got nothing to worry about there. Uh, E.T. is close to my favorite. Good movie. I need to see that again. It's been forever. I don't remember anything about E.T. at this point. Yeah. Thoughts on what if we'd gotten the JP talked about where dinos were used as mercenaries using tech to talk with humans versus Jurassic World. Plays the Praise the rags. Dinos praise were used rags. as mercenaries using tech to talk with humans versus Jurassic... Are you talking about, like, human-dino hybrids? Are you uh. talking about, um, Theodore Rex? <laughs> Probably not. Um, I, I don't know, man. Every time I hear about people's, like, crazy, uh, awesome sequel ideas, I'm always just like, can we just not? Can we leave it alone? It's so good. It doesn't need another um, one. Make a different dinosaur idea movie. You don't need to t connect it to Jurassic. Leave it alone. I Even think then. there's a game on Steam called Dino Mercs that's supposed to uh, release in quarter two of this year. Uh, oh. Dino Mercs is a roguelike deck building game where you take on the role of a veteran member of Dark Solar Defense, a shadowy private military corporation Whoa. to survive, build multiple decks while conducting Whoa. operations, engaging in fierce combat, and defending your Whoa. base from attackers. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. And I guess Whoa. all the mercenaries are like dinosaurs. Sounds pretty fucking badass, dude. Whoa. Jurassic Park 1 is my favorite movie since I saw it at age 6. Yeah, it'll do that. It's, uh, it's pretty good. And with that, we have caught up with the Jurassic oh. Park EFAP Super Chats. Thank you all so much for sending them in. Being so kind as to hang out with us while we did it. And letting us know what you think of the idea of it all, you know? And whether or not we'll do more in the future. Nice. We are tempted cool. already. I'm sure you could be understooding of that. But... You know, we also want to cover some stuff that's coming out, like um, Resident Evil. That Resident Evil game's coming, you know what I want to... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When's the, when are they doing Resident Evil 9? Is that going to be like four years from now or something? Uh, I don't know. It seems like they alternate yeah. um, every couple of years. Sure, they're working so on it. So maybe 2025? To oh, think absolutely. it won't star Ethan Winters, my favorite Resident Evil protagonist. You guys didn't well, say anything. Ethan Winters? <laughs> you know. You know, it's just yeah. there's no love for Ethan Winters. Wow. What a what a what a character. What a yeah. guy. What a what a dude. What a fun guy. What a, what a fellow. He's been through so much. Mm -hmm. That Ethan mm -hmm. Winters. I remember him very fondly. All those things that he said. His ability to notice when rooms were lit or not. Mm. Um. His in. Incredible ability to engage in conversations with people. Um, yeah. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Yeah, goodbye, yeah, everyone. See you. Bye -bye. See you later.